Resurrection Sunday. It is Easter Sunday morning. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And it is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Yes, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, glory to God, glory to God. Amen, amen. Oh, grab your Bibles. We're going to be in Luke, in Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. Lord, we just thank you and uh, for allowing us to be a part of, of, of uh, your world, your salvation, be your children. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us by forgiving our sins and and then, Lord, saving our souls. Oh, Lord, we thank you this day, and we glorify you, we magnify you, and we give you all the praise. We plead the blood of Jesus over this conference call and this live Facebook broadcast, Lord. We pray, we pray the blood over everyone. We plead that blood, Lord, over everyone who's listening now and who's going to listen to this later. We plead the blood over their cities, their towns, and their communities, over their homes and their families, Lord. We plead your blood right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way this Resurrection Sunday morning. Have your way this Resurrection Sunday morning, Lord. Have your way. We glorify you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What we're going to do first is that we're going to um, um, have the reading of the word. And again, welcome everyone to God in the Midst Radio. God in the Midst Radio. Get them radio. Hallelujah. So we're going to read the scriptures this morning. And uh, we're going to come, like I said, from Luke chapter um, 24. And we're going to have the... Uh, Bible Gateway, chapter Gateway. 24. Read it. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, yes. and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He's not here. He's risen. He's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? Yes, yes. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Yes. And be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. Mm -hmm. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, Mercy and Lord. they believed them not. Mm -hmm. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Now, now, we're going to skip down now to verse 30 in Luke chapter 24, and I hope I get it right. So we're going to try. And how he was known of them in breaking of bread. 
said one to another, he expounded unto them in all and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, yeah. he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Yes, he did. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. Mm -hmm. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with this them, verse 35. he took bread and blessed it, yes, and, bread, yeah. and gave to them. Mm -hmm. And their eyes were opened, yes. and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together. Oh, hallelujah. I had to get all those verses in there, uh, but we praise God for that. All right. So we're looking at Luke chapter tw uh, 24, verses 1 through 12 for the Sunday school lesson and verses 30 through 35. I just got so excited this morning. I didn't even say, hey, hello, welcome, everybody. How you doing? This is Pastor Mark McCoy. This is the Get em Radio Sunday School Lesson on Resurrection Sunday morning. Oh, I'm just excited, y'all. I'm just excited. Our lesson today, our lesson today, um, uh, the key verse is verse uh, uh, 6 of Luke chapter 24. He is not here. He is not here. He has risen. He is not here. He has risen. That's our key verse for today. And we just glorify God for that key verse. Our key concepts for today, our key concept is that uh, um, Jesus rose from the dead. And, and because he rose from the dead, hallelujah, uh, uh, he, he uh, oh man, curse, I'm just, Jesus rose from the dead just as he said he would. I'm just excited this morning, y'all. Y'all got to excuse me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What? It's, it's, it's just Resurrection Sunday, guys. And I just get I just get excited about what the Lord is doing in my life, in your life, in the life of everybody in the world. So our keys for kids today is number one, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Number two, uh, but that is not the end of the story. Jesus rose again on the third day. And number three, Jesus is alive. He is our risen Savior. Yes, he, he's alive. And he is our risen Savior. And so as we look at this lesson, we're going to go deep into it. Uh, what our uh, aims for today, our learning facts, is to recount events surrounding the announcement of, G of Christ's resurrection the biblical principles that we're going to deal with, the biblical principles that we're going to deal with is to emphasize that the resurrection of Jesus Christ affirms to us that he is indeed uh, the son of God. Oh, hallelujah, glory to his name. And then from this, we want to get a daily application that we can walk in this word. It's one thing to hear God's word, but it's another thing to be doers of God's word. So we need daily applications that we ought to be following. And the daily application for this lesson is to remember daily that the resurrection of Christ has both blessings and responsibilities for all believers. So as we break down this lesson today, our outline is uh, verses 1 through 12 of Luke chapter 24, the witness of the women. And then we're going to look at uh, verses 30 to 35, and we're going to look at the epiphany at uh, uh, Emmaus, and now on the Emmaus road, really. And so this epiphany, this epiphany, epiphany, I got to say it right now for why it's on my heart. Epiphany is those aha moments. I don't know if you had a, oh, aha. I finally got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because many times we hear a word, we hear the resurrection, we, we and, and we don't grab hold of the concept of what God is really doing for us 
in the resurrection. Yeah, so so here it is. Here it is. How 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 do we find the strength to go on doing difficult times? How do, how do we find that strength? How do we find that strength? We might wish we were the victims of a mere April Fool Day joke, only to realize, only to realize that that our problems are quite real. Many, many find uh, encouragement from this old English proverb that says uh, uh, it, it's always darkest before the dawn. And then when you listen to people taking this advice, uh, the, 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 uh, today these same words are used by therapists and, 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 and self-help gurus and, and all the motivational speakers, and they tell us, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up is their message. Better times are ahead. We have all, we have all experienced uh, dark times in our lives. Yes, we have. We've all, we've all experienced like we're at the end of our rope and like it's all over, said and done, and the fat lady has some. But, but I'm here to tell you, it's not the end. It, it got cuz 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 it's not what the fat lady sings it's it's god himself he he has the last word and the crucifixion of jesus christ seems like such a dark time for many of the disciples but 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 it was dispelled by the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ oh hallelujah so when we look at luke the end of Luke chapter 23, uh, verse 54, it, it tells us that clearly Christ was crucified and buried, and they prepared his body. Yes, he died. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, the old preacher, didn't he die? Mm, didn't he die? Yes, he died. No if, ands, and buts about it. He was crucified, and he died. And the women, the women, they went and prepared his body, and they got all these uh, 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 spices, and they put together and wrapped his body and placed them in a tomb. All of that was done. And then came Resurrection Sunday morning. Oh, the Son of God came out of that grave. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to teach today, but I'm so excited. <laughs> Glory to God. So we look at the women's witness, the witness of the women. Listen to our text again. And this time we're going to come, we're going to come from the uh, uh, message Bible. I just want to read it from the message Bible. He says, at the crack of dawn, on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the very spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb. So they walked in, but once inside, they couldn't find the body of Jesus. So they were puzzled and they wondered what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seems two men, light all around them, cascading all around them, stood there. And the women were all struck. And they bowed down in worship. And the men said, why are you looking for the living one among the dead in a cemetery? He is not here, but has risen but has risen up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to the sinners and be killed on the cross and in three days raised up? Then they remembered Jesus' words. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. And we're going to come back to verses 9 through 12. 
these women went to the tomb and they witnessed the fact that, that the stone had been rolled away. And they got in there and they looked inside and they didn't find the body of Jesus. Man, they didn't know what to think. If somebody stole his body, and somebody grabbed, what's going on? They, they were puzzled and they were wondering what to make of all of this. And then out of nowhere, God sent two angels with light. The glory of God, the Shekinah of God, the glory of God, shining all about them. And the women were, were just struck with, 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 just with fear, and, and they bowed their faces and, like they wanted to worship these men. And the men told them, say, why, why are you looking for, for the living among the dead? Yes. Jesus has broken free from death. Oh, you got to hear that. that. That's what's so important about the resurrection is that, that, that death no longer has any power over you and I. Death no longer has the ability to hold us back or stop us from doing what God wants us to do. Death has no power over us because it has no power over our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Breaking free from death. Are you breaking free from death by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you breaking free from those things in your life that are holding you back? The songwriter say, break, break the chain, break all the chains. Jesus will break the chains over your life. Chains of addiction, chains of brokenheartedness, changes of sickness. He'll break them. Changes of financial bondage and death. He'll break them. Give you a newness of life. Jesus broke free from death. And these women were now witnessing it. And the angels were testifying of the fact that he is not here. Stop looking for the living in dead places. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Stop looking for the living in dead places. Stop it. You, you're not going to find the living in dead places. When you go to the cemetery, mm -mm, ain't nothing but a bunch of dead people there. Oh, I'm gonna break it down. When you go to the club, ain't nothing but some dead people there. If you go into the crack house, ain't nothing but some dead people there. If you're going, if you're going into to, to the liquor store, ain't nothing but dead people there. If you're going to the brothel, oh hallelujah, glory to God, in the strip club, ain't nothing but dead people there. You need to go where there's some living people. And you know I, you know me, I'm hard on, on, on our traditional churches. Yeah, sometimes you can go to a traditional church and ain't nothing but a bunch of dead folks there too. Don't be looking for the living among the dead. I hear the psalmist says, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Knowing my help comes from the Lord. I'm looking for the Lord because the Lord is alive and well. So here it is now. The women have seen this sight and they are just like, wow. And he told them, say, remember what he told you. He was a prophet. Oftentimes we forget what God has already told us. I know some of us, we, we, if, if we were laughing about this yesterday, when we were children, our parents used to drug us. Yeah, yeah. They drug us to church. They drug us to church because they, they understood the concept that, that raise up a child in the way that they should go. Even if they depart, they will return. 
And we we drug our children to church every Sunday. We drug them to church. But 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 this drugging that we did for them is helping them today. Oh, hallelujah. And when you heard the word, you remember. Jesus told them that he was going to be handed over to the sinners and that he was going to be killed on the cross. And three days later, he was going to rise. The reason that he died on the cross was not because those nails kept him there. The reason he died on the cross was not because the Roman guards were standing there watching. No. He said, I give my life. No man can take my life. I give my life. Jesus could have called down a legion of angels to come and rescue him from that cross. But I could hear him in the garden of Gethsemane when he says, oh Lord, please let this bitter cup pass me not by. But nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. Jesus did it with him. And now they will remember. And he said in three days, I'm going to rise up. Oh, hallelujah. So now let's move on to verses uh, 9 to 12. And it says, they left the tomb, broke the news of all this to the 11 and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanne, Mary the mother of James, and the other one, woman with them kept telling these things to the apostles but the apostles didn't believe a word of it thought that they were making it up but peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb and he stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes that's all he walked away puzzled shaking his head oh hallelujah Oh, hallelujah. This is breaking through unbelief. Many people, as these women witnessed this, they went and told the folks, and the folks didn't believe. They left the tomb to give them the greatest news in the world. He's alive. He's alive. And the 11 didn't believe. I always like this passage of scripture because first it says the 11, so that lets you know that Judas is no longer there. Because Judas betrayed him with a kiss and, and then later hung himself because he still didn't know how to repent and believe in Jesus. That's what that word 11 means. It means that, that there was somebody of the 12 that didn't believe. He couldn't break through his unbelief. Now we have Mary Magdalene. She was an old prostitute. Joanna. Don't have much information on her. But Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman. Yes. They went and told the disciples. They went and told the apostles, but they did not believe it. Though they thought these women were making this stuff up. Now, the first messenger was the angels to the women. The first human messengers were the women to the apostles. Many people got, and I'm just going to say it, got problem with, with women Preaching, teaching, and pastoring. I don't have a problem with them because my mom are pastor. My, my sisters are pastors and teachers. And I, I, I know that they speak a word from God. But because we in a misogynistic society, we think when women say something that they must be crazy. Mm-hmm. I just called you out, you male chauvinist. Oh, yeah, I called you out. You better let that go and let God, because God can even use a donkey to tell you what is his word. 
And even though Peter didn't believe what the women were saying, he had to go see for himself. Yeah, yeah. He, he was like he was from St. Louis. Show me. Like he was from Missouri. The show me state, show me. He jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb and he stooped down and he looked in and he saw that the grave clothes were there, folded neatly. <laughs> yes. And he walked away puzzled. Oh, hallelujah. He walked away puzzled. Now, that was the women's witness. The second part of our lesson is the epiphany on the road to Emmaus. And, 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 and Luke, Luke, what is he trying to do here? He's trying to show us. That, 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 not only did the women see Jesus, but there were other accounts of others seeing Jesus after the resurrection. And so the Emmaus Road story says that, 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 that same day, two of them who were walking to the village of Emmaus about seven miles outside of the room, they were in deep conversation over, over the things that had happened. And, and in the middle of their talking in question, Jesus came up and walked alongside of them. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus walking with us. He walks with us. He talks with us all along the way. And in the middle of their talking question, Jesus, we came up. But they couldn't recognize him. They couldn't see him. They couldn't understand who he was. And he asked them, why this? You, what is this? What is this you discussing so intently as you walk? And they stood there long faces. It's like they had lost their best friend. And, and, and then one of them said, his name was Cleopas. A Cleopas. Excuse me. Cleopas. Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what happened during the last few days? And Jesus said, what happened? What happened? These things that, that happened to Jesus of Nazareth. He was a man of God, a prophet, a dynamic, dynamic in works and words, and blessed by both God and all the people, the high priests. And the leaders betrayed him and sentenced him to death and crucified him. They told the story. Then they said, early this morning, these women went to the tomb and they couldn't find his body. And they came back with the story that, that they had seen visions of angels who, who, who said he was alive. So some of my friends went to the tomb to check it out and found that that tomb was empty. Mm -hmm. But they didn't see Jesus. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, you thick-headed, slow-hearted, why can't you be simply believe all that the prophet said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to be had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then, then Jesus, he started at the beginning from Moses and went through all of the prophets and plot and pointed out everything in the scriptures through, 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 through the prophets and through Moses and through the Psalms that referenced to him. Mm -hmm. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed, and, and they said, well, well, uh, uh, you know, we finna go on, but uh, you know, where you headed? Well, you want to come stay with us and supper with us? It's easy. The day is done. Come on. Come on, come to the table with us. And it says that, that he took the bread. And as he took that bread, he blessed it. Thank you, Lord, for this bread. And he broke it. And he gave it to them. And at that moment, 
their eyes were open and they recognized him and then he disappeared. And they kept saying to one another, did not our hearts burn as he opened up the scripture? They didn't waste a minute. They, they were up on their way back to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and they their friends gathering together and it was really happening. The master had been raised up and Simon had saw him. And it says in verse 30. Oh, no, no, I'm excuse me. I'm, I'm down all the way down to verse 35. Then he said, and they told what things. What things were done in the way and how he was known of the breaking of bread. There is an epiphany that happened on the Emmaus road. And when they got to Emmaus, he broke bread with them. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it out. Again, I say, he blessed it, he broke it and he gave it out. Oh, oh you got to hear me now. He blessed it. He broke it and he gave it out. And when he did this, they, that's when their eyes were open. That's when they recognized who he was. And they later said, did not our hearts burn? Why did their hearts burn? Why did their eyes get open? Because the process of breaking bread is a process that we all have to go through in our lives. Jesus went through it. God blessed him. Blesses my son whom I'm well pleased. God blessed him. But he had to be broken on the cross. And after he was broken, God raised him up from the grave and, and gave him all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And he gave that to us. We go through that process. God blesses us and he gives us a purpose and an assignment. And then all of a sudden, hell breaks loose in our lives and things break us. That order of breaking bread, blessing it and breaking us. And we don't want to be broken, but, but, but God has to break us. And the reason he does it because he wants to give us out in a greater way. Oh, yes. He'll take our mess and make a message. He'll, he'll take our trials and give us triumphs. He'll take our test and give us a testimony. He'll take our victimization and make us victors. Victors, we're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So I don't know about you, but I don't mind the process anymore of him blessing me and breaking me because I know he's going to give me out in a greater way. Oh, hallelujah. That's what God did for, for Jesus. He blessed him. He allowed him to die on the cross. He broke him. But then he raised them up from the dead. He's alive, I tell you. And now he's giving them out in a greater way. He wants to give Jesus to you. Are you ready for him? So as we conclude this lesson, the points to ponder, to think about, 
empty tomb offers us the hope because Jesus lives and we shall live also. We, we should always remember that we serve a promise-keeping God. We, we, we need to proclaim the glorious resurrection of Christ even if others do not believe. Then the lifting of spiritual blindness allows us to see the Lord and know he is risen. He is risen indeed. Thought to remember, no darkness, none, no darkness. No darkness can overcome the S-O-E, the sun. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we praise and celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Thank you that Jesus lives. Help us to remember and celebrate today and every day. Father, thank you for keeping your promise by raising Jesus from the dead. Help us to trust you more. You are trustworthy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I end this recording, I always like to give those an opportunity to give their lives to Christ. And we pray the prayer of salvation. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, Forgive me of all of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins and the sins of the world. Lord, I believe you raised him from the dead. Now, Lord, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior for all eternity. Send your Holy Spirit to help me, Lord, every step of the way. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, mm, for making me whole. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, Facebook, we're gonna get off the line. We thank you for joining us this day. And uh, we're going to go into our conference call portion where we talk and exchange with each other. The conference call number is 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. I hope you've enjoyed God in the Midst. Get a radio Sunday school lesson. And we ask you to come back and join us again. Be blessed and always be a blessing.